This is 2OF Entertainment. This is the MG3. Now, MG formerly Morris Garages, kind of still is, is the fastest growing or one of the fastest growing brands in the UK. What do I mean by MG being one of the fastest growing? Surely it's a homegrown brand from here. Yes, but it kind of had a reboot when uh, SAIC from China actually took it over. The MG4, which is their sort of compact entry-level uh, EV SUV, has been doing really well for them, uh, has won lots of awards and accolades. I reviewed it. I really liked it. It's good value as well for what it was. And thus emboldened, they've now introduced the third generation of this which is the mg3 which is their super mini segment this is not an ev though this is a hybrid and it's a complex hybrid because it runs in a number of different ways it has several modes it's not modes that you can select it's modes that it actually does so for example uh, it has the full ev mode so actually it's this ev this sorry this hybrid actually has got bigger batteries to try and run more like an ev rather than a hybrid and thereby uh, keeping emissions as low as possible so it's got bigger electric motor as well so ev mode it just runs on ev series that's where the engine uh, runs through the generator to power the electric motor to drive the car then you've got series in charge which is basically uh, the same as series but also it's now the engine is also running to charge up the battery as well when it's under low charge then you've got drive in charge where it, it the engine directly drives the wheels so at that point it directly drives the wheels but it's also charging the battery as well and then you've got parallel where the engine and the electric motor both combined uh, drive the wheel. So there's a number of different things that it does. Combined, it actually gives you 192 brake horsepower. It's got a 100 kilowatt motor in it, but it's also got a 1.5 litre four-cylinder petrol engine. Um, it gets a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of about 8 seconds, which is pretty quick in the segment, and 106 miles per hour top speed with a fuel economy of 64 miles per gallon. Quoted, I saw 64.7 over 100 miles, a mixture of motorway and through London driving the other day. Uh, CO2 emissions is 100 grams per kilometer. Now, prices for these start at 18,495, so 18,500 pounds. That's for the SE. This is the top spec. This is the trophy. There's only two levels, actually. And this one is 20,400. So we'll have a look around the car, we'll check the uh, cargo capacity, we'll check the interior, and then of course, we're going to take it for a drive. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. Right, so let's have a look at the uh, boot space. It's not powered, but up it goes easily. And as you can see, it's not bad at all. It's about what you'd expect, but I think it's probably a little bit more than your average Super Mini. In fact, they say it's 293 litres of space. Now, you've got tie hooks over there as well, so you can um, put your nets. And down here, you've got a little bit more room because you've got a little bit of a bin there just next to the battery. Uh, the regular battery that is not obviously the EV battery but you've got a little bit of space there along with the tire repair kit where you can hide some extra stuff if you want to there is your triangle and then you've got um, a hook here and you have a light here on this side and that's pretty much it let's see what the rear space is like Okay, this is actually my first time sitting in the back of this car. This seat is set for me. I'm about six foot two with long legs. So you can see that actually it's a little bit tight, but there is still some room here. So, and of course this is compressed a little bit. This has got pockets on this one. And um, there's a little bit of room there. So that's not too bad. The bigger issue I have is this bit here for the shins because that comes out a bit. So that does rob a little bit of room. And the foot room, no problem at all. So despite the fact this has got a bigger EV battery, which I don't know where it is. I'm assuming it's in the floor. But somehow it doesn't have the high floor problem that some of these cars have. Although generally it is a higher car. For a Super Mini, you do sit quite high, as we'll see when you're in the front. But there's no problem with the legroom. Over here, you've got two vents. That's not bad, is it? There's actually two vents back here. And you've got uh, a charger as well, a USB charger. 
and a little pocket just under there there's a little pocket as well now, of course you've got the pockets there now being the trophy it's got better specs so these seats are sort of leather look so they're leather style is what they call them and uh, with some cloth insert so this is sort of canvasy this is leathery this is quite nice um that bit there if you can see so that's quite good and then you've got obviously the uh child seat isofix child seat anchor points there is no central armrest these headrests do come quite high but they can obviously um be uh, taken out and the seat back does fold but it folds as one so there's no split folding it's one complete thing so it, the whole thing falls down i know that because i did do an airport run in it the other day um dropped my son off when he had quite a lot of equipment that he was taking for um a bit of work that he was doing and we we had to put the seats down to get all of that in and that was fine okay let's get in the front see what that's like here we are check it out so I don't know how this thing works. It appears to be on, but it's not actually on. But I guess because I just turned it off, so it probably stays on for a little while, I guess until you lock the car. So anyway, this should be interesting. I should be able to show you what that looks like uh, when I turn it on. The starter button is actually down here. So foot on the brake. Look at that. Now look at all of these. You see all of these warning lights that come up on there? Have you seen like anything like that? Now, there's no engine noise because it just started up in EV mode. And basically, you've got uh, two screens here. So you've got a 7-inch for the driver. And then you've got uh, a 10.25-inch there. Uh, obviously, it's got full connectivity, as you can see here. Apple uh, CarPlay, Android Auto. There's your climate, uh, radio, um, navigation. Now, it's got remotes here and here. And um, this one actually operates the volume. This operates your trip computer. So if I press that, you'll see it's come up there. And then when I, go th when I, when I scroll through that, I can scroll through and it shows you next service, tire pressures, and then that. And then I can go up and down and that gives you accumulated total. And uh, EV, kilowatt, what's it doing there? Mode, that's a drive mode. And they're operated from this button down here. So if I press that, you'll see that goes to sport. And I press it again, it goes to eco. Let's leave it in normal. There's how much range you've got, but that's obviously with fuel. So it's about half a tank. Your speed, speed limit, time. This is all your cruise control stuff over here. And um, so these are the buttons for that. This is your voice control. You can actually set these up the way that you want so these are customizable the star buttons are customizable this is all related to the cruise control but the cruise control actually is operated from here so over here you've got normal buttons so this is the normal uh, if you press that then you've got your full climate control system comes up there you've got heated seats you've got heated steering wheel uh, and the rest is there you've got obviously the demisters uh, this is your this is your volume control this is your home screen so you press that goes back to home which is also there as well navigation is there uh, unnamed road but you can see it's got nav built into it obviously as I told you in fact I'll go through some of the spec in a minute don't don't forget this is the trophy version actually let me do that first because there are some differences right so as standard in this car uh, in the MG3 you get satellite navigation you get Apple CarPlay Android Auto MG i smart connectivity um, and you get all of those uh, you get air conditioning you get a six speaker audio system with obviously bluetooth connectivity uh four usbs we'll go through those in a minute and a rear parking sensor and a rear camera um you also get advanced driver assistance systems with mg pilot i'll go through that but the mg pilot includes lane keep assist departure warning adaptive cruise control in a little car like this adaptive cruise control forward collision warning and traffic jam assist so in the traffic jam it will just creep forward by itself um this trophy version also has blind zone uh, blind zone detection and lane change assist uh, led headlights at the front so i think you get the halogen headlights otherwise but otherwise i think rear lights are, are both uh, leds like i said you get the leather uh, style upholstery with the cloth inserts uh, front passenger seat map pocket i don't know what that means front passenger seat map pocket whatever that is it's on the list but i'm not sure what that is actually um 
a rear privacy glass you can actually see it's quite dark actually it's one of the things about this car in the front it's quite dark in here and then you've got a rain sensor wiper you've got heated front seats like i said heated steering wheel 360 degree camera now i just want to show you so let me just show you this first um because it's quite a bit to get through on the screen oops but you have your cubby box there deep you can actually slide this back and forth so you can close that segment and then you've got a segment here which actually goes all the way through and then you can kind of partition this the way you want to partition it to pull that through that so i so thought you can also have it like that if you want this is a bit plasticky it's a bit flimsy feeling but you know it works it's fine and then you've got your parking brake there you've got your driving mode that's your gear selector there your cup holders that also you can partition uh, as you wish uh, and then you've got this is not a wireless uh, charging pad could be but it isn't in this case but you do have usb there usb there and 12 volt power supply you got a glove box which is not bad at all you've got pretty deep pockets for the doors uh, you know and this is like this is this is really nice this is a really sort of traditional mg kind of look about it that sort of harks back to the heritage of the brand and this is all right this is softish and the screens are nice and that's really soft that's leather but then you do have plastics here but you know what it's fine that's leathery that's that bit's leathery and you've got the vents there which are very effective and you've got the uh, the steering here which is a square steering so morris what am I thinking of? Allegro? <laughs> Harks back to that. So you've got the square steering wheel there. Over here you've got door locks, you've got lights. Uh, you got your, not lights, sorry. You've got your wing mirror adjustments. And then you've got two stalks for wipers. And then obviously for the lights as well. Now, like I said, buttons on the steering wheel. Um, operate various things. The thing about the steering wheel, which actually has been causing me problems, is that you can adjust it for rake. So that's good, but uh, sorry, but you cannot adjust it for reach. So it's in a fixed position. Now, that's why you need to take this for a test drive because for, for me, it's a little bit problematic because I've got long legs. I, need to, I feel the need to put the seat quite far back, but then I find myself stretching my arms out. You see, like if you put your hand on the top there, the palm, you have, I mean, that's just about okay because you've still got a little bit of a bend there, but sometimes it feels a bit further. So my seating is quite upright. So I put my seat back upright. So for me, that's why I can do that. But for some people that prefer to have it back, that will, that will be a bit of a stretch. So make sure that you take it for a test drive. I have found it a little bit difficult to get comfortable in this car. It took me a while. I'm okay now, but it did take me a while to get comfortable in it. Um, if we come back to this screen, because this is quite interesting. Um, so let's look at the screen here and we go. Uh, so actually, if you do that, you've actually got all of these. So you've got your climate, radio. So in the radio, you've got DAB. You can choose what channel you want to watch and all the rest of it. And uh, music, USB, vehicle. So in the vehicle, you've got this. So MG Pilot. So this is where this section here, this is for your adaptive cruise control. It's actually operated from MG Pilot. So this is where Intelligent Drive, ACC is your adaptive cruise control. And then you've got various things that you can have there front collision, alert sensitivity mode, all the rest of it. Uh, for driving, you've got this, your energy regeneration. So you actually got three levels of energy regen. So this is how much when you lift off, it slows by itself. So it's almost like an EV, like that one pedal mode where it's charging the battery. So that's what it does from there. Um, I've got it on medium because, and you can actually operate these uh, through this button that's actually been set up for it. So actually, if I go back to that, so in convenience, you see, you can set the buttons up. So function for left wheel, uh, left uh, button on the steering wheel, regenerative braking, and function for the right star button is the AC mode. Um, then you can also adjust how you want everything uh, over here. Lighting, safety. Now there's something else, obviously that's that bit. Now in here, you've got assist. Lane change assist, rear crossing assist. Now, you know, you do get a bit of too much interference i feel um somewhat in fact that's one of the reasons why i had to turn uh down the region because i just found it and was, even now like i was trying to show you even the slow speeds it quite judges a bit because it's not quite as smooth because i don't know if it's trying to break or whatever it's trying to do and uh, this one uh, i want to put this on low just leave it on alert because the steering uh, kind of ruins the drive a little bit because it's constantly fighting you. There's no feel in it anyway, and then you feel like you're fighting it, so it doesn't make any sense. Uh, that pattern continues over here and over here, so that's quite nice. Uh, anything else on here? The 360 camera, that's what I wanted to show you, that's right. Vehicle, we've done that. So 360 camera, that one. 
Now this is really interesting because you've got the three, obviously you've got the bird's eye 350, uh, 360 there, 350, 360 there, missed out a bit there. You've got your front there, but you've got your front wide angle, front view, and then where was the other? 3D, there you go, 3D. So you've got the 3D view of the car and actually then you can actually go around it. So you can actually move this around. Somehow the car shrinks. There's another video, or maybe I'll put it as an inset, where I'm walking around the car and my son was actually doing this while he was inside the car. And it's weird because the car was taking up the same amount of footprint as it was before, but I look like a giant compared to the car. The car looks like a toy. Anyway, that's kind of cool. And if you're like in a tight situation and want to see where you are, that's quite handy. Right, I'll tell you what, let's take it for a drive. Sorry to interrupt the video guys, hope you're enjoying it. In the meantime, I wanted to tell you about this. It's my first novel, The Euless Files. It's all about cars, it's for you guys. Get your copy now at Amazon.com. Okay, let's put it into drive and let's have a little go in this. Now, one thing I've got to say about this car straight away is that it's quite dark and, um, you know, it's quite dark inside the car. So, and the rear visibility isn't the best out that way. So, I do feel that it needs a kind of sunroof element to it, you know? Because um, just to sort of, you know, this roof comes out quite low like this. Um, and of course it does, this is the trophy edition, so it does obviously have, you know, the spec um, with the darkened rear windows. But even so, a sunroof, I think, would really, really help um, to pull it out. Now, I'll put it into sports mode. It's in sports mode now. And we've got a nice little road here. Now, one thing I will say is, like, the mid-range punch on this thing, like, it's almost like an electric car. So, actually, that was quite, that was a higher speed. But when you're slower, it does feel a bit like an electric car. So, like, you're, you're down here, sort of about 30, just under 25 miles an hour, and punch it, ah! And you can actually hear the electric motor. So you do get this kind of very EV type of uh, performance from this vehicle, which is quite extraordinary. But it happens at that lower mid-range, it's only there. And of course, off the line, it's not bad as well. And off the line, actually, I can get it to chirp. So uh, not that time, just into a corner, but sometimes you can, get, you can really get the tires to spin up uh, and it's quite a lot of fun. There is no feel in the steering. I've turned the aids off, so that really helps because otherwise the steering just seems to be fighting you the whole time. There is quite a bit of uh, play as you can see, but it's actually fairly responsive and fairly accurate. So in that sense, it seems to work quite well. The square shape really doesn't take much getting used to. You know, you think, oh, what, that's a weird shape. If you like the push and pull, even that's not really a problem. Um, it seems to work fine. Actually, the push and pull works better with this. The cross arm thing can be a little confusing because of the corners of the steering wheel. So, but other than that, it's fine. The, uh, like I said, the performance is great. The braking is actually very good, very linear, very strong. Um, and it does so, uh, uh, these sort of speeds the braking works really well. I would say that at lower speeds sometimes the braking is not so great um, because again it's that it's the thing that it's doing between the regen and stuff. Now I think I've got it on the lowest regen right now as well so oh look at I mean that I mean I know it says 0 to 62 8 seconds on paper but in reality it feels quicker <laughs> I've got to be honest you know it feels a bit quicker it feels quite punchy You're almost hot hatches you know it's uh, hatchish I should say um, is how it feels and that's got to be a good thing right so the performance element is there the brakes are pretty reassuring so you know like you know you can use them and then you know you can throw it into a corner there you go, a little bit of tire chirp there, but it holds its line. I mean, it really is reluctant to do anything like uh, understeer. It will hold the, the road tightly, it grips tightly. So, really good in that sense, you know. I am not telling you that this is a performance hot hatch. It's not. Um, there's a warning from the steering again, so I thought maybe it's just detected something there, or maybe it's come back on. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, this so it's, it's it's not really that, but it is something that you can still have a bit of fun with. And if you find yourselves on road like these, and you go, okay, well, you know, there's a little bit of fun to be had, and I can open it up a little bit. Well, that's it's just showing me that slight. I'm just slightly over. So again, black bars. 
and you can hear the engine comes in there's a little bit of disconnect between the engine noise and what the car is doing but also because the response is not quite instant but it is there it does happen but again you know yeah I mean just the slightest hint of understeer only because I really shoved it into that corner but honestly it holds the line very well so in that sense it's really good now what about the ride well I'm just turning on to what I know to be one of the worst roads in terms of surface um, that I know of and um, it's pretty quiet so you'll see, you'll probably see me, it started already. You'll probably see me being bounced up and down. Now again, oh see, uh, I mean again, it's like, it's it, the weight is down on this car. It's down below because of the low center gravity, because of the battery pack. And there is a kind of stiffness to it, but it doesn't bump thump. It's just kind of like, you, it pulls you down, pulls you back up again. So it's not jarring. It's like, you can feel that the road surface is a bit awkward. You can feel that, but it's not jarring. So, and obviously on a smooth road, it's perfectly fine. Um, the smaller wheels, I guess, probably help. I don't think they're, you know, incredibly low profile or anything like that. So I think in that sense, they're quite good. And again, you see, I'm really sort of being bounced up and down there, but it's not really too much of an issue. So the visibility down at the front, like I said, I mean, the, the bonnet just goes right down. So you don't really see what's going on at the rear. It's quite, you know, one of the things that would be really, really good is that camera system on it is absolutely brilliant, but you have to go into the menu. You, or you can, sometimes at lower speeds, you press it. It's weird because like now it won't do it. Like so now it's done it. So now the, now the, the, the 3D digital thing has come up. It's showing me exactly where the curb is. It's showing me exactly what, but then it's, cut out again at speed so I think there's a certain speed thing maybe 20 miles per hour where it cuts out again but it would be actually really useful to have or maybe I don't know if you can configure one of these star buttons to have an instant like bang I've got the camera so like when you're exiting car parks or when you're coming to, into park next to a curb or something like that you know immediately you can hit that button and you've got um, the uh, the, the camera will come up and we'll, you, it will show you, you know, where you are, what you're doing sort of thing. The, I've been listening to the stereo. It's okay. It's not bad at all, actually. And the DA, DAB works really well. And of course, you can play all, uh, songs off your, uh, your phone and stuff like that. So that's quite useful. The, I took it on the motorway, as I mentioned, and it was very smooth. I mean, it, it cuts a very fine shape through the air. So there's very little disturbance, you know, it's, it's very settled, it's very composed, you know, and although like, you know, when you throw it around, you can see the body moves around, but actually it's very composed, but certainly when you're slicing through the air, I think because of the sleek shape, the aerodynamic shape, you know, it does tend to not ruffle um, the airflow very much and cuts a very serene shape through it. So that's quite good. But, you know, again, like that ability to just punch it is, is, kind of hilarious really and the other thing is like you know you're not going that fast when you're having a bit of fun with it either so that's actually quite handy and around town I should just mention of course I mean um, this review I'm just driving outside but I did spend a lot of time driving actually through London the other day in and very heavy traffic and I didn't un unfortunately use the uh, the traffic jam assist system which I suppose you could use uh, but even so it wasn't as tiring as I was expecting that journey to be because I knew I was going to hit rush hour I knew I was going to be in the middle of London and so I knew that it was going to be quite a torturous journey home it took actually two and a half hours but at the end of it you think oh god you know and of course you know those kind of things are draining but overall it wasn't as bad as i was expecting it to be because it's a comfortable ride and a fairly easy car to drive so overall thumbs up for the mg3 what i would say is try it for size first to make sure that you fit comfortably in it put your family in it as well if you have one and you're going to use it for them to make sure that they're comfortable in it and also with the um with the uh the, the they don't feel claustrophobic or stuff like that it's not the airiest uh of cars in that sense but other than that thumbs up let me know what you think of it in the comments below and i'll catch you on next